I would say that the people that end up being successful are the people that just keep going. You know, like every once in a while, yeah, you need to take a little pause or a day off and you, you don't have to go, you know, make it your whole life every day and neglect your family or anything like that, but just keep moving forward a little bit at a time and keep looking for opportunities, create your own opportunities. Hey Queens, yeah, you, you know who you are, God, come on. Go ahead and put that crown in your head. Now tilt a little to the left. Now a little to the right. Perfect. Now let's get to work. Because we know you got big goals. And you got big dreams. And not afraid to let them know. Why? Because you step into your purpose. You speak out on your faith. And you shift up in your journey. Because you a boss. Welcome to the podcast, Drop the Expiring Act with your host, Belly of QueenBayGoals.com. Reminding you that you are a queen before anything else. It's your life and your goals. Make it royal. All right, y'all. Go ahead and work that crown. Hey, Queen Bays. Welcome to another episode of the Drop the Inspiring Act podcast. Today, we have with us author, blogger, and entrepreneur, and coach, Gail Wood. Gail, welcome to the podcast today. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Yeah, so I am uh, from the spa industry. I'm a massage therapist and esthetician for 25 years. And in 2013, I decided that I wanted to create an additional stream of income. The spa industry can be very seasonal. It can be very up and down. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I could write an ebook or make a course. And I started a blog in 2013. And one thing led to another. And I went full-time online in 2016 selling my courses and my books and my programs and, and coaching people from the wellness industry and the spa industry. And now I'm kind of taking the next step and, and doing some, some new things with um, my designing your dream life workbook and working with women more in a general sense. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So you, you transition in like three years, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. And it Like knowing what I know now, that was pretty fast. At the time, it felt like forever. (laughs) I can imagine, yeah. (laughs) Awesome. Okay, so tell us a little bit about I. Where this season's theme is called royally f to royally fierce. And when I read yours, I was like, she's in. (laughs) So let me tell you what you wrote. You wrote in your um in your intake for sick, burnt out, stressed out, and broke. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm yes, like, that's all I need to hear. <laughs> so take us back to this Gail. Take us back to sick, burnt, out, stressed out, and broke Gail. Take us back there. What was happening in that time? Yeah, well, I was working full time at a spa. I had sold my business. Um, it was in that time period back in the 2009, 2010, where a lot of people got in trouble with their housing and mm-hmm. mortgages. And we ended up in a situation with two mortgage payments every month. Wow. Uh, A teenager and a preschooler. Um, And just just working so hard that I kept getting sick. I had strep throat four times. Wow. I had bronchitis. I had walking pneumonia. I mean, I would sit there rocking my son, putting my son to sleep, just crying because I thought there's something really wrong with me and they're not finding it. Right. (laughs) And I think it was just that I had gotten so run down because massage is a very physically demanding job. It's also mentally like people tell you their problems. Um, And I was just burning the candle at both ends, trying to keep my house clean and meals made and you know I have a high standard for myself so <laughs> so I can see where you got that burnt out really fast yeah yeah and so t- tell me what shifted like how how did what what made you realize in that moment that something needs to change because it's not working anymore what shifted for you 
Well, I just, you know, really just being online, I started seeing these women writing these ebooks and these planners and these things popping up on my timeline. And I was like, you know what? I bet I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I really, and I bought this planner um, from a lady. I don't know if you've heard of her, Leone Dawson. Yeah. And it was just, just kind of this, um, you know, plan your amazing year type of planner. And I paid $9 and 95 cents. And I looked at it and I was like, this is a PDF. Mm -hmm. You know, if she sells a thousand people, this PDF for $9 right. and 95 cents, I started doing the math and I was like, I want a piece of that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that you just jumped into it. So you didn't know anybody that was already doing it. You just found this online. That's pretty interesting. I love mm -hmm. that. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and you know, I, I ended up signing up for one of her courses. She had a kind of a basic online business course. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to follow step by step what she says. And she said, go to Weebly and buy a domain name, start a blog. So that, I did that step and I just went step by step. Oh, wow. I love that. So tell us where you are today, because now today, I think you have two websites <laughs> that I saw, yeah, I which I was right. like, okay, she got from one to two now. <laughs> so my, my website went through several different iterations. So it started out as LMT resources. And then I did galewood.com for a little while. And now I have Massage and Spa Success and I have Elevate with Gail. So I kind of wanted to have two different brands. Mm -hmm. I understand. Um, and on the Massage and Spa Success site, so I started teaching courses after I wrote a couple of ebooks. I launched my first online course. Um, it must have been 2015 or 2016. It was a 30 day marketing boot camp. Mm -hmm. And every day I would write up a lesson or I would film it on my computer and I just have this little laptop. And I would film up my lesson on there and upload it to Vimeo and email it out. And that was my very first online course. Um, and through doing that course a few times, I was telling people, you know, you need to post on social media, you need to send newsletters. You do these things to market your business. And they're like, yeah, we don't have time. Right. And so I was like, well, I can make content for people to send out. So I started my content clubs where I had a done for you marketing content um, subscription. Mm -hmm. And that was hugely successful. I could not have predicted how that would take off. Sometimes you just have a huge win. Right. So I just love how you went from one industry and you completely shifted and went into another one, even though you were still doing massage along the way. I love that. So the other, the other question that I have for you, I saw um, on your website, it said you ended up in the World Massage Hall of Fame. <laughs> so how does one get in the World Massage Hall of Fame? <laughs> um, well, I think you just have to kind of be everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, there's um a conference called the World Massage Festival. And I was wanting to promote my business. So I signed up to be a vendor. And after I was a vendor for a few years and the people that run the festival got to know me and saw what I was doing, they said, would you like to be in the Massage Hall of Fame? And I was like, oh, wow. Sure. <laughs> Sounds good you to ever me. think it would turn into that? <laughs> never, never. I never thought I would be a, on the cover of a magazine. Um, I never thought I would have, you know, my books in print. It's just been, you know, just one thing after another. And there's, there's ups and there's downs. <laughs> I love that you say that. So I would, I want you to speak to the woman right now who is still in that place where she's just scared because she doesn't know what the other side looks like and she's in this place where it's just like okay I'm in this f moment I'm stressed I'm burnt out and I don't know what to do so what would you say to that woman I would say that the people that end up being successful are the people that just keep going you know like every once in a while yeah you need to take a little pause or a day off and you you don't have to go you know, make it your whole life every day and neglect your family or anything like that, but just keep moving forward a little bit at a time and keep looking for opportunities, create your own opportunities. 
um, I was trying to think of how I could get more people to know about my business. And I just started pitching myself to industry magazines and Massage Magazine, the editor of Massage Magazine emailed me back. She went and looked at my blog and emailed me back and said, oh, we don't want you to be on our blog. We want to put you in our print magazine. Oh my gosh, I love that. And I was like, <laughs> what happened? That's so, amazing. you know, there's, and even, you know, even like today, I'm in that podcast group and I saw your post and I pitched myself. Here so. <laughs> That's amazing. So where can we find more of you online, on social? Where can we find more of you? Tell our guests where they can find you. Yeah, so on Facebook and Instagram, I'm Gail Wood Success Coach. Um, I would definitely, um, my Elevate with Gail website. And then if you kind of want to see my, my business, my other business, it's massageandspasuccess.com. But I would like to just you know, invite you to my website, you can read some of my blog posts, check out my designing your dream life workbook. And, you know, I feel like my ideal clients will, will be like, yeah, I want to know more about her. And they'll, you know, sign up for my email list and we can see where it goes from there. <laughs> well, I want you to tell us more about that. I, I was looking at your design your dream life workbook. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. So after I, kind of realized, oh my God, like my life has done a 180 since I was <laughs> F. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, but some of the things that I did, you know, they're just very subtle. Like your dream life isn't, we often get into kind of this, like when our life sucks, we're like, well, I just want to move to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> and live on the beach and not have anything to worry about and win the lottery. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so what I do with the designing your dream life is like dig into all of those things. Like where, what would living at the beach give you? What feelings would you have from that? And I started digging into that, some of that stuff for myself. And I'm like, cause I really, you know, was kind of obsessed with, I just want to move to the beach <laughs> and, and escape reality. Um, but I was like, well, if I was at the beach, you know, I, I'd go for long walks every day. I'd, you know, be able to walk to some shops and some restaurants and enjoy time with my family doing that. I wouldn't be cold. So then I thought, well, how can I have that now and not have to wait until I have my beach house? And so I just started looking at some different things and we got the opportunity to move about 45 minutes from where we were. And I, I said, well, let's just look at some houses where we could walk to town. Even though I thought they were out of my budget, even though I was like, I don't know about this neighborhood. Moving into this neighborhood where I live now, I was like having panic attacks. I was like, I don't belong there. It's all doctors and professors. <laughs> I don't belong in that neighborhood. Um, and so, you know, it's like you have to shift your mindset. And I thought, well, we can go look. And that was what my, the first thing I said was, we can just go look at the house. It can't hurt to look, right? Right. <laughs> I so, love that. And I was like, well, I don't want to be cold all the time. So I started looking on Facebook Marketplace. I bought myself a sauna. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, That's okay. Solution. <laughs> yeah. So you can do these little things. And we got a treadmill, one of these, those cool treadmills with the video trainers on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I can go for a long walk every day, no matter what it's doing outside. And so, and really all of that, I'm like, I don't, you know, I don't know if I really need a beach house at this point. Right. <laughs> I have all the stuff I want. So that's what I do with the designing your dream life. It's like, you can have the, the things that you think those big dreams are going to give you. You can start bringing them in. And you guys should definitely check it out. It's available on Amazon and her website as well. Um, I was looking at it and I'm like, maybe I need to go find my dream life. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, if you can see in my room, I have a calendar right here that has like the beach every month. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's like my escape calendar. <laughs> but I need to look at it. Awesome. So I wanted to go back one, um, to one more 
for this season, we're also doing the royal goals theme. And you said the types of goals that you love are just levitating and take you to your next level. So tell us about the next levitating goals for you. What do you have next on the list? Uh, so I'm a, I've, I've been listening to this audiobook, and she said, you should write your top 10 goals down every day for 30 days. So I've been getting really clear on this and I've been writing down that a thousand women watch my webinar oh, awesome! Mm -hmm. and a hundred of them joined my program. So that's probably my next big goal is to get my, this webinar launch where I go through what we were just talking about, like all of those steps to figuring out what it is that, that you really want. Cause we lose that. Well, you know, life is busy. We're moms. We're taking care of other people. Right. And we can really lose some of that. And I think that you can't have it all. Yes, I definitely think so too. Um, yeah. So she also has a webinar, you guys. You have to check that out on her website as well. All the links will be below in the show notes. So make sure you go and check it out. And as you know, we always close out the podcast with a quote and the guests are given the quote. And I like yours, which says... <laughs> Choosing, no, the little things are the big things. So yeah. tell us why that's a quote that you live by. Well, because that's, you know, that's how I built my whole business. It was just doing a few little things each and every day, sending that email, doing that live stream, um, getting up 20 minutes early to read a book, to motivate myself and get myself, you know, revved up for the day or um, even when you get frustrated and feel like you're spinning your wheels, like realizing, oh, I can go walk around the block for 10 minutes and reset myself. And all those little things are what adds up. I love that. All those little things add up to you guys. So I, I, that's the other thing that I was just reading that I wanted to surprise her with. So I was looking at your social media and I'm like, well, she already gave me the close up, the quote that we're going to close with. But then I love this one that I saw on your um, social media feed lately. It says, choosing faith over fear leads to flow. When I read it, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's, and that's really like something we have to do over and over again, because you can't be in two mindsets at the same time. So if you're in fear, you're not in flow. If you're not in flow, you're not creating, you're not moving forward. So it's just having faith day after day, you know, and it's not, it's not always easy, you know, putting together a big project or a big webinar or something and having no idea, like, are five people going to watch it? Are 500 people going to watch it? Is this going to do what I hope that it does? Right. You know, but if it doesn't, what I have found is you learn a lot. Right. <laughs> and it can, it, it can lead to something else entirely different that you never could have imagined. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so I love that. So that's what we're going to close on today. When I started, I'm like, we have to close out with this one. <laughs> so I'm going to close out with this. Choosing faith over fear leads to flow. And you heard that from Gail Wood, you guys. <laughs> so make sure you come back and listen to another podcast episode. We have all great guests this season that are telling us where they were from Royally F to Royally Fairs. And like Gail said, you know, the little things are the big things. So just start small. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It was great to, great to talk with you. Thank you for being here. All right, guys, come back and listen to the next podcast episode. You have been listening to another episode of Drop the Aspiring Act. If you're looking for more information on this podcast and other episodes, please visit queenbaygoals.com. That's Q-U-E-E-N-B-A-E-G-O-A-L-S.com. All right, y'all. Podcast.